Hey guys, my name is Aaron. In this video, we're going to be continuing work on our robotic bartender. It's an Arduino powered robot that mixes drinks for you and all of your friends, alcoholic of course. In the last video, we worked with some shift registers and I wrote some code so that we can control all of our components from the Arduino. In this video, um, since we're waiting for some more parts to come in the mail, we're gonna spend most of our time 3D printing uh, some parts that we can use to um, hold some components and uh, tie some things together. So we'll be 3D printing some motor brackets, uh, some spring-loaded cup holders, and also some brackets to hold the tubing uh, for the pumps and such. So let's get started. Okay, so now that we got most of the structure built, we need a way to spin it. And we got this motor here, and it looks pretty small, but this is a geared motor, and you can tell because it's offset from the center. So it's geared and it actually takes quite a bit of a spin or quite a bit of pull to spin it. Um, but because it's geared, it doesn't spin super fast. So we 3D printed a wheel to increase that the diameter. So we put a larger wheel on this shaft so that for each revolution of this, we can get a little more spin on here. And we put a little notch on here. It's hard to see here, but on this shaft, there's a flat spot and that's gonna meet with our wheel here so that when we spin it, um, it spins with the shaft. We also put uh, this grippy material around here and this is actually just a piece of yoga mat that we uh, cut out because uh, it was pretty sticky. And to mount this motor, we printed a motor stand here and this kind of just sits right in between these two arms here. Snaps right in there. It's nice and snug. Even if we rotate this, this motor is not going to go anywhere. And to get this to the bottom of our platform, we need to offset it from this base quite a bit uh, because we have a pretty big gap here to fit all our electronics. So we also printed this uh, stand here that we're just going to screw this right in here and screw it down to the bottom of our platform. And then once we power this up, it'll spin this platform just like that. All right, let's see what happens if we actually try applying some power to it. Okay, so I spent some time rewiring the uh, relays and the power distribution board. Um, so there are still quite a few wires down there, um, but it's a bit cleaner. And I also added um, the linear actuators for the extra two um, that we added in the last part of that video. Uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is wire up this thing. This is a motor controller. So this, I think this is uh, 12 to 40 volts, um, but you can specify whatever input voltage you want, and then it's uh, pulse width modulated. So as you turn this knob, um, there will be more pulses per second, um, and it will drive the motor faster. So we'll be able to uh, control the speed of the motor by adjusting this knob. So that's just basically to make sure that we're not going too fast when we're driving the platform with the motor.
All right, now I have the uh, motor controller hooked up to my bench power supply. And the motor is just connected here. And I've connected the power supply directly to this, but um, I'm just gonna wire this up the same way that I did for the linear actuators for the drink dispensers. Uh, so if I increase um, the position on this knob, you can see that it starts to move the motor. And I can increase that more, make it faster or slower. Uh, so we're probably just going to fine tune this once we have all of our position switches on. Um, so the position switches will sit underneath here and they'll help us determine at what position um, our platform is relative to the base. If we find that for some reason our um, position switches are being hit but the glass travels a little bit too far, we could fine tune the speed. Um, so it's just kind of a, a tuning thing that we'll use. Uh, but so I'm going to hook this up to the relays and then uh, and then we'll move on to our spring-loaded cup holders. All right, so now the problem is that we have to keep these drinks in place while we have a rotating platform so they can slide around. Um, and to do that, we're thinking we're gonna make some cup holders, so we'll have about eight of them, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, to hold them in place, uh, we are thinking that we're gonna have some sort of arms that are spring-loaded, uh, in some way so that they'll grab onto the drink and prevent them from sliding from left to right as this thing is moving around. So for the arms to clasp, we have to have some sort of spring on there. And well, if we go with one of these springs, that's not going to be too helpful because this is a axial spring and we want something that would rotate. So uh, the most obvious one is a torsional spring. Looks a little bit like this and uh, you can hold one of these ends fixed and then you can push or pull on this side and the spring will rotate radially. We'll probably have some sort of arm up against this side of the spring and it's going to pivot somewhere um, on some pivot that we're going to have to hold it on there. And then uh, our cup will just be on this side here and there's going to be two of them and hopefully that will hold our uh, drink in place. All right, so this is what we came up with in our 3D CAD model for our cup holder. And by the way, I'm viewing this in Adobe Acrobat. Most people don't know that there's such a thing as 3D PDF, but this is a free program and anybody can view 3D models in a PDF format. And it's actually pretty handy because you can uh, hide and unhide different components in your assembly. You can create cross sections. You can change the lighting. So you can do a lot of things with this, and it's uh, surprisingly versatile for a free program. Anyways, what we did was we took a bunch of cups from our kitchen, and we measured the sizes to see what kind of cup holder we would need to fit most of the cups in our cabinet. We came up with one that's about 3 inches in diameter, and to accommodate the different sizes and shapes, like we talked about, we have those spring-loaded arms. So what you're seeing on the left and right side here are the pivots for the uh, spring and for the arms. Okay, so this is our cup holder base, and uh, looks like it turned out pretty well. Um, uh, we put the spring on there, and the spring also just snaps right in, and this tab here holds it pretty well. But the difficult part with this was actually the arms and not the base. Uh, we had to go through a few different iterations on the arms. So first we started out with a flat, small piece like this, and... Uh, and so then we just slide this arm right in there and the spring goes right up against that notch. And uh, the action on the spring seems pretty good as well, but when we put both of them on here and then we put the drink on there, uh, these arms turned out to be a little too small and the drink was able to slide around there a little bit more. So we started printing different size arms like these, um, trying them out. Uh, we had to thicken up some of these uh, areas here because when we were trying to remove the support material, they snapped off easily. Um, but then we decided these look kind of bulky. And so the next design we went with looked something like this. So this is quite a bit different. Uh, instead of having a flat platform, we just have one little uh, part of a ring here and a little stopper. And uh, But when we put this in here, um, it didn't quite work out. Uh, the stopper 
would slip off because it didn't print quite right and also it was too close to the edge. All right, so this is the final design that we went with. Looks uh, quite a bit different than our first iteration. So what's going on here is it has a little notch um, to push the spring further back. Uh, the spring force is proportional to the displacement and when it was at the beginning of the displacement it didn't have enough force to keep this thing down so we had to kind of raise it off the back a little bit for more spring force. Um, in addition, to prevent this arm from sliding out, we had to put another little notch here. Uh, and not only does this notch keep the spring against this notch, it also uh, prevents this arm from sliding out this way. And in order to prevent the arm from just falling down, uh, we also had to put a little stopper here. You can see that guy right there. So that hits the bottom of the uh, base there. All right, so I just put the other arm on there. And in addition to that, I also snipped these springs off with a pair of pliers. And turns out this holds it pretty well. Uh, there it is. And I can even pick up the cup and it's not going anywhere. All right, so we got a bunch of couplers printed and we're starting to line them up on our bartender here. And so you can see what we've done here is we put a few on the rotating platform and we put some glasses on there. And these glasses are gonna help us line up these uh, cup holders just to make sure we got them spaced out correctly. And um, we marked them with tape here on the bottom so that uh, in a moment here, I'm gonna take these cups off and then I'm gonna screw them in. And they just take one screw in the center. So let's go ahead and do that. The other thing we made was a bracket to hold all the tubes that are coming from the mixer bottles inside our bucket. Uh, so, because we had to wrap those somehow uh, to our drinks, and this is just going to screw right into the side of the bucket. And the hole on the end here is where we're just going to kind of loosely fit the tubes, but it's just wide enough so that the tubes should be fairly snug in there. And triangles are always good for reducing weight and uh, maintaining uh, structural integrity so just to save some printing time and to kind of make it look cooler you know put some weight saving holes and that's what you see here and then i thought two screw holes were enough to keep it stationary there's not a whole lot of weight on it so that's the design i ended up with Okay, so we just got the rest of our uh, pumps in the mail. So I'm gonna spend some time to wire these pumps up. And in order to do that, I'm going to take my drill and just drill a couple holes, one here and one over here. And then redirect the wires from both the pumps and the flow meters uh, down through those holes near the center post and um, to the relays at the bottom. Alright, so that's it for this video. Uh, like we said earlier, we're still waiting on some more parts to come in, but once they do finally come in, we'll finally be able to wrap up this project. So the next video is probably going to involve us finishing up the rest of the programming for the Arduino. We're going to actually mount all our brackets and all the stuff that we 3D printed and hook all the components up and hopefully see it working. And as always, if you like these videos, uh, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date uh, with all of our projects, uh, including this one. And also in the next uh, video, we're going to talk about the AI components of our Smart Mirror project. Uh, so don't forget to stay tuned for that. Uh, but until then, see you next time.